new up and coming writer that you've got to you got to get in here first and foremost and yeah, we're otherwise not changing, we're not changing the audience through watching the characters struggle we're not giving them insight into that character's journey then they and, and that's why the marvel things are having great trouble we already know they're going to win and they don't have any struggle and therefore we can't learn from that and there's that rule that all drama is conflict and the reason i believe it's conflict and the reason i believe that we watch others and mirror their behaviors is that we're an amazing creature and it takes us years to feed ourselves and that meant that we had to bond into groups that were tolerant of each other enough so that our young could get into the future which is you know i'm big on evolutionary psychology but essentially we're just colonies of genes trying to put our, ourselves into the future and stories evolved because they were systems for working within the culture that we had of watching and observing others and then modifying ourselves so that we could keep the culture healthy and we watch all kinds of detective shows where somebody tears the fabric of the culture and other people go out and sew it up and take that person out of it because that stability is the place our young can grow up. And if we have a bully and he, and he pulls people down, we have to see a, a group of people find the courage to go and pull him down. And we watch cowboy movies or we watch horror movies right. or we watch horror, where, where these things keep repeating themselves because they, and we watch love stories about how do you find a mate that's going to be loyal and give you the best opportunity to get your genes into the future, which is why we like Cinderella. She gets to mate with the uh, prince who's going to have the best opportunity <laughs> to feed her genes. So, you know, it's kind of crazy. But um, <laughs> and, and, and that's when, when you surrender to writing, I honestly believe that we're biologically bound to write things that work. I think the three-act structure is a biological form and um, yeah. I'm sorry, Max, if I go on about this stuff, because I get so excited. Um, I, found <laughs> Let's a keep going. I found a professor who was doing studies on oxytocin uh, called Paul Zak. And what he was doing with his students was taking a movie with a three-act structure and another movie without a three-act structure and taking blood samples before and after showing those movies and found that the movies with the three-act structure changed people's cortisol and adrenaline levels and that those people played tit for tat games in a more generous fashion after watching a three act structure. And it says to me that three act structures are a biological force. Now, a three act structure means your character starts off with a perspective, tries to go on an adventure, according to Joseph Campbell, um, and then fails and goes into the belly of the beast, the, the birth and, re and, and death of a, and then, and then, reformats themselves into a new persona with that knowledge of that failure and then tries to go to the end of the story with this new persona and that person that they should have been plays out and what what i really think when we're watching a story isn't the external adventure but what it is the external adventure supports the character in a web what we're really watching is that that person is um a meta it's an avatar for us to learn about ourselves through their struggle. And right. we we, right. we found this, um, we were writing a, a movie on the flying tigers and um, we were a group of volunteers. It was gonna be sort of like Robin Hood in the air. And um, it, they were a group of American volunteers that want, went to China to fight the Japanese before Pearl Harbor. And they, they demobbed out of the American military and they were secretly smuggled into um, China and actually into Burma. And we thought this is a great heroic and fun adventure. And we came up with two characters, a, a, a do-gooder, a, a best friend of the of the, the eventual protagonist and the protagonist who wanted nothing to do with this. Um, and he um, was, um, you know, a guy that's caught screwing the commander's wife in, in, in an airplane. And so they want to get him off the base. So they force him to go with these other guys or they would have to court martial and embarrass everybody. And when he gets there, all he's looking is, how do I get out of this? And, um, and then his best buddy's killed. And the commander of the Flying Tigers group comes up to him and says, I've watched you, you're the best flyer. You have to teach and lead my men or more people are gonna die. And he reveals, I want nothing to do with responsibility. I don't want to take this on. And what we find out is he says, my father was an accountant in 1929. And he was he felt he was responsible for everybody's uh, 
lives through their, their funds and they all lost them. And he went into a bar and shot himself. And that man, and then Chenault says to him, you're not your father. This is your chance to let that go and become the man that you should be and help these people. And what we discovered in that was what we call the nugget, which is the damage that the character is actually trying to overcome in the story. And, it, and I'm talking about features more because features are like short stories. They're like 60 pages, 50 pages of text. And having one agenda, Robin Hood is spoiled, arrogant, little asshole raised, you know, burned, burned Marion's hair when he's a little kid and got away with it and becomes the person that he should be and changes to the person that's willing to fight for other people and, and not be selfish.